Hello and welcome to the Melbourne Traditionalist Podcast, the very first. I have with me David Hiscock from XYZ and I'm Mark Moncrief from Upon Hope blog. How are you, David? Very good. Thanks for having me, Mark. This oh. should be a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to the discussion. Yeah, I hope it is. Yeah. 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 Um, we're going to talk a bit about traditionalism today and mm-hmm. what it is. Um, how do you understand traditionalism? I think of traditionalism as a rejection of the terms of reference the left give us for the term progressive. Yeah. So they have tried to brainwash everybody into thinking that anything new um, that and anything that goes against what has traditionally kept civilization running is by its very existence a good thing. Yeah. So yeah. Um, anything that goes against uh, traditional uh, morality, traditional family values, anything that, any new way that they find to um, reframe how they're just stealing money from one group of people and giving it to another, um, that's all presented as progressive. And by its definition, according to them, that's good. Yeah, yeah, no, that's, yeah, a, that's, yeah. that's very good. And yeah, so, in yeah. fact, right away, you've come up on a very important um, insight. And that is that our civilization is built upon new. Mm-hmm. Everything has to be new. Mm. And that's one of the reasons why you see things like art. It used to be a lot better 100 years ago yes. than it is now. Yes. And it's because we're always obsessed with that new. And it doesn't matter whether it's good or bad, it's just got to be new. Mm. And you, know, you see that with the movies, with um, you know, music. You know, everything it's just got to be new even though we know that some of the best stuff was done you know 50 years or 100 years ago or 500 years ago mm. we're still no it's got to be got to be new it's got to be up to date mm. and you hit that right on the, on the head mm. well yeah um the challenge from there is to just is to discern like when something is new is it good is it wholesome is it um going to be uplifting or is it something that's going to drag us back to the dark ages? Um, if, for example, like uh, you can, if you look at the uh, progress of uh, Western music during, from the say the sixteen hundreds through the seventeen hundreds, the eighteen hundreds. And music's your specialty, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. This is, this, you <laughs> teach we, music. We, we, yes, yeah. We, we, we've gone to the spot that I love. <coughs> Pardon me. Um, you can see how composers were pushing the boundaries yeah. and uh, the upholders of like what was the status quo at various stages found their music just to be a little bit too much. Like um, we think of Mozart as being sort of just an apex now, um, but at the time even his music was just considered a little bit too much and yeah. you, you see that as a consistent thing. Um, and now when we analyse the way that music has progressed over that time we can see how more and more dis- there were periods where more and more dissonance was used and then it sort of dropped off a little bit um, and then towards the end of the 18th century 19th century especially we saw more and more dissonance used in music um, and that's you know, dissonance is important because it gives music just that little bit of bite to it yeah. if there was no dissonance then it would just be bland and just too nice um, and so composers found more and more interesting ways, more and more complex ways of, of using dissonance um, and just pushing what was music. Yeah. But then they reached a point where they went too far. Mm-hmm. Um, and you can see Marxist thinking coming into that. Um, like the, it went, there was a form of music called serialism where they wow. deliberately found a way to avoid any kind of tonal harmony any kind of melody um, oh that sounds lovely yes it, it, like because if you look at music <laughs> um if you analyze it like uh, there are actual patterns if you look at it scientifically and uh, some notes are more important than others and other all these notes have a relationship to each other yep. if you destroy that relationship of one note to another you get complete randomness and when you analyze it that we lose a pattern um, yeah. the human brain is trained to hear patterns and yeah, that's how we actually um, make sense of music and get pleasure from it and so 
um, this idea of serialism got rid of those patterns. The serialists were Marxists and they deliberately wanted to write music to take away the, the pure joy of, of music, which they saw as a bourgeois concept. And reframe music as a way just to create better socialists. You know, and there you've come with a second very important idea. Yeah. And that is that really when you think about the left, the best way to think of them is they're the children who like to break other children's toys. <laughs> Yes, yes. And we see this now, or recently we've just seen it with um, The Little Mermaid, yeah. where it has to be a black girl mm -hmm. who's going to be the, the Little Mermaid. And instead of telling authentic black stories, you know, American or Caribbean or African, mm. they instead take one of our stories yes. and put someone in who's not appropriate. Yes, absolutely. And, and apparently um, there's a rumour going around about uh, James Bond going to be a black woman. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I've heard. And exactly the same, you know. It's not like you can't have a black spy, mm -hmm. you know, but of course to them it has to be one who's always been white. And that's, that's their joy. That's what they get pleasure in by yes. destroying the things that we like. And that's what you're describing as well. Yes, absolutely. It, this is a great... Um, example here like because the left have been blacking our history um, yeah, yeah, yeah yeah like if you look at um, the way the BBC is presenting like just all the old traditional um, stories like whether it's King Arthur or whether it's Robin Hood they're introducing black characters who are never there um, yes. they, they found a way of shoehorning Morgan Freeman into Robin Hood Prince of Thieves like Robin Hood brought him back from the Crusades but <clears throat> Um, and at least you can you can sort of say mm, yeah all right yeah yeah and yeah. He, he was the token um, non-white character who um, gave everybody lectures on how intolerant they all were and that, that that was twenty years ago now they're just basically saying oh no England has always been a land of immigrants yes. um, yeah. uh, but yes even with our fiction because fiction is important too because. Our, our fiction and our fantasy stories are the stories that we tell about ourselves. Yes. And so they're the stories that we use to understand ourselves. Yeah. Um, and so, like, the left have been... I've, I've read, a, like, snippets of articles where they've said, um, oh, we can't believe all these racists are upset about there being a black mermaid. For starters, the, mer the little mermaid isn't real. Get over it. But the whole point <laughs> of that is that, like, if we're talking about Disney, we're talking about fake characters... Disney have deliberately created non-white princesses. There's Mulan, there's Pocahontas, there's a black princess who I can't remember the name of. Um, um, so they have gone out of their way to have princesses from other cultures. Yeah, exactly. And, and, but now they're wanting their cake and eating it too. On that point though, with Disney, um, we shouldn't see Disney in the same way that we see Lord of the Rings. Like, um, so, no, no. Yeah, like Lord of the Rings is, is basically a story of it, it of the last fourteen hundred years. It's it, like it's literally telling the story of Christendom fighting for its survival against uh, Islam. Um, like if you look at Mordor, like it's even shaped like Turkey, and like the Battle of Minas Tirith is essentially a retelling of the the siege of Vienna. Um, but with Disney, like Disney. It's I had never thought of it like that, but oh. actually, I can see. Yes. I can see how, how that interpretation has some merit. Yeah. Well, uh, the charge of the Rohirrim, like yeah. where they, the, all the horses they they charge against um, the York army, like that was pretty much mirroring the charge of the winged husses led by the Polish king Jan Sobieski, the great, the largest cavalry charge in history. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's 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 like Tolkien just took all the details and made made them walks. Um, so with Disney, the thing about Disney is um, it's uh, for the last few decades, if not longer, it's essentially been a way of dressing up Satanism um, in, as family values and entertainment. Like whether you look at the, the hand shapes that the characters make um, and these days when you look at the messages of the plot and of the songs that the, they sing... Um, they're not really presenting what we would think of as traditional values. Like, no, certainly not. Yeah, no. yeah like no. if you look at the plot of The Little Mermaid, The Little Mermaid is a rebellious teenage girl who doesn't like being told off by her father, wants to leave her fam, her heritage, 
um, for another for man of another species who she's just met, and so she makes a deal with um, with the devil, literally the devil, yes, Ursula, yes. Um, and. Eventually. In the original story, it is the devil. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah right. Yeah, and eventually, her father has to make a sacrifice for her to to um, have a good life, basically. So, um, and if you look at the words of like some of the songs, like the "Let It Go" song um, yeah. from Frozen, and the whole plot of that, it's about um, it's just telling the female empowerment empowerment message yes um, yeah. which goes against what we would think of as important traditional values absolutely yeah. absolutely I mean every person in society has to have their place yes yeah. and that's one of the things that that we've certainly lost is that sense of place mm. and in when I was even when I was growing up it was you know know your place mm -hmm. and now you never hear that because people aren't supposed to have a place which means they don't belong Yes, yeah, yeah, and absolutely. that's that's a pretty frightening thing. And and most people have have taken it the opposite way that oh, I don't have a place. That means I'm unlimited. I can do anything. Mm -hmm. But of course, that if you can do anything, then you're not actually achieving things because mm -hmm. you're not concentrating on things. You're not taking yeah. care of the things that are actually yours. Yes, yeah, you don't have that focus. Yeah, yeah. Um, so just to stay with the Little Mermaid just a little longer in that case, um, if in that case they're changing a white character to a black character, because, <clears throat> and this is the way they sell it as well, um, uh, um, girls of, young girls of colour need um, role Robots. models who look like yeah. themselves because uh, that way they... Uh, you know that they're more receptive to the message, yeah. and so by definition, um, they're less receptive to a white woman of color, of color as a role model. Yeah. And so by their own definition, then um, white young girls will be less inclined to be led and influenced by these um, non-white uh, Disney princesses. So I'm quite happy for Disney princesses to be blacked, and I'm quite happy for this progress like air quotes, progressive morality to be um, pushed on non-white um, females as well um, because um, essentially it helps us to take back our own people and it and it's uh, like it's just, up until now we've had the poison of cultural Marxism being sort yes. of um, pushed on our own people. If you're going to push it on um, all the non-white invaders who are coming into our country as well that at least gives us a fighting chance. <laughs> yeah, actually it's an interesting, um, again, an interesting point that you've raised because people think that liberalism, which is the political philosophy of our age, yes. of our parents, of our grandparents, mm. um, that its great goal is the autonomous individual. Mm. And uh, that if, uh, and, and, and that's concentrated on whites, and that that's why so much we see so much anti-white activity mm. ideas mm. but actually in the end this will involve all people oh yes it's, it's not we're, we're just the first yes we're not the last correct you know so everybody else who is who is going along with this uh, this anti-white rhetoric eventually it will be their turn yes and i think that's maybe what we're seeing with the Disney movies is they think, hey, we've, we've done as much as we can here with the whites, we'll now move on to other people and still hopefully drag the whites along. Mm. You know, they, they, they've been convinced that, you know, you're not allowed to notice race. Yes. It'll be interesting to see what happens there. Yes. Now, what I want to do is I want to take, take us back to mm -hmm. where we started. We were talking about music. Yes. And I took you off topic. Oh, that's fine. And you were actually, you were actually uh, making some very good points. You were that's talking true. about how, how the Marxists had come into music, classical music, yeah. and was it serial? Uh, it was, um, yeah, um, it's defined as serialism. Serialism, um, yeah. Yes, uh, there's, this, um, there's this tool that they have called the tone row. 
um, where they take all 12 tones of yeah. the Western scale and you just put them randomly. Obviously, you can use the tone row to make a um, to make it sound musical, but they deliberately jumble it up. Yeah. Like, it's like they scramble it up. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. And it's designed to remove any kind of system, um, any, any kind of uh, tonal relationship, any kind of tonal hierarchy. Yeah. Um, it, it's, it's as though they are literally applying Marxism to music. Yeah. 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 Now, I read an article online about the CIA uh-huh. influencing classical music, effectively destroying classical music. And I actually wrote um, a reply to that mm-hmm. article. And I said, well, when you think about it, the CIA came around in 1947 in the West. By 1947, classical music was... Yeah, the damage was already yeah, done. Yeah, the dam- damage was well done. Yes. And in fact, where I think the last popular piece of classical music is probably Bolero by Ravel, which came out in 1927. Oh, yeah. Um, there are f- but uh, then there uh, are yeah. some Soviet composers, ironically, yes. who continued up until the 1940s, mm-hmm. you know, still producing really great classical music. But even for them, after, after the 1940s, there's nothing of note, if you'll excuse the pun. <laughs> yeah, um, it's as though the idea... Hang on, are we still recording that? Oh, yes, we are. <laughs> um, it, it's as though... Like, if we go back to what we were first talking about, where this, this idea of the new... Like, it's as though the idea of the new had to include um, just like letting go of all tone and all harmony. Um, yeah, I, I see it as a, um, as a musical wrong term because you see like in those great uh, decades of say the 20s and 30s, 40s, 50s, um, Western music like with jazz and rock and roll was, was doing amazing things. Yeah. Um, so, and we, we see even now how like a lot of the ideas that like, a lot of the musical ideas, a lot of the harmony, um, is still being um, really pushed by really great musicians. Like, we're, like if you look at um, like modern bands, like I think there are some amazing bands, um, bands like Yes and Dream Theater and the modern equivalents of guys like Snarky Puppy. Like, they have a fantastic mixture of just um, just um, referencing like the great. Tradition, musical traditions of the yeah. past and, yeah. and still pushing boundaries and yeah. still having a, an amazing combination of, of consonants and dissonance um, always sort of going okay where's that line as opposed to um, arguing there is no line that line is simply a, a patriarchal capitalist illusion um, it, it's it, like it, if you acknowledge that sort of uh, just just that great push and pull um, just uh, music can be really really exciting um, yeah. th- there's, there's so much amazing stuff that you can do um, and you're always going to be able to find something new to do um, so th- that's where I'm going with like it's, it's important how you discern it um, uh, like because like something new isn't this doesn't necessarily mean bad but, no, no, I yeah. agree. And, and yeah. new can be good or bad, but the problem with our civilization, and it's been true for centuries, mm. and it's not, it's not new, ironically, mm. Mm. is no. that we, we want that new. Yes. And it doesn't matter whether it's good or bad. It's just got to be new. Mm. I mean, and we see that with art. I mean, that's the, the classic example, mm. is, you know, you go back 100 years... 200 years and you're stunned by how good the art is mm. and then it it just peters out yes you know mm. and when you look at the history of art you see oh there's a new school there's a new school there's a new school there's a new school yep. you yeah. know because everyone's trying to make that new breakthrough yes and progressively it gets worse and they don't stop because it has to be new mm. uh, yeah again you can look I was amazed going to some of the art muse- museums in Europe 
yep. um, seeing just how good they got their paintings. They were essentially up to photographic quality. Yes, yeah. yes. Um, and so I've, I don't mind the Impressionist reaction to that, where they decided, okay, let's sort of... We have the ability to um, paint a painting which looks like a photograph, yep. or we can obscure it. Um, because... With imp under impressionism, from what I can see, they still had uh, the same spirit as what had come before it. It's like yes, they were wanting to go against some of the technical rules, but yeah. they still had that, just that love, um, and they just had that Western spirit, the the our European spirit um, as the guiding principle. Yeah. Um, it, it's what you see with modern art is a reje rejection n not so much of the rules but just um, the culture and religion and racial identity that um, created those rules in the first place it's a rejection of all of that so like when you have like uh, people putting up like a blank canvas and saying that that's art yeah. and well, yeah. they've just painted it white and saying that that's art um, yes it's a rejection of the rules but it's a rejection of everything that made the rules as well yeah, no, exactly. Yeah. And and to properly break the rules, you have to understand the rules. Yes, yes. And that's one, a, a problem that's becoming increasingly big is people mm. don't know the rules. Mm. Yes, they're breaking them, but there's no there's no art to it. Yeah. And really, uh, this is something that, um, you know, art what, from about 1850 onwards has been about self-expression. Mm -hmm. And traditionally, art is about glory, about glorification mm. of man, of God, of nature, um, of our ability to create something beautiful out of something that's not beautiful. Mm. Mm. And now it's about just about glorifying me, for example, mm -hmm. and just my expression. Well. That's really it's a it's a substandard, isn't it? Mm. Um, th that's this is an interesting one to go to because um, in the classical music again, like there was a change from the eighteenth century to the nineteenth century from classical music where um, composers were generally employed by royalty, and in the nineteenth century you had revolutions coming in, um, you, you had Enlightenment thinking coming in, yeah. and so composers were. Um, freer to express themselves um, and, and they did yep. um, they also got influenced by nationalist ideas um, yep. and, and which is tremendous um, I don't have a problem with um, an individual outlook um, because I, I sort of see um, some uh, healthy individualism as like sort of and there's the thing isn't it there's a difference between healthy and unhealthy yeah I, as, as long as you have um like a healthy society with like the boundaries clearly set um, as opposed to say open borders rejection of the family like atomization of all of us from everybody else yeah um, that's that's just letting everything go um, and, and then saying that you're an individual like just seems a bit meaningless because like really you're just an NPC <laughs> in that yeah, regard yeah, exactly. like we, we have all these people who think they're they're individuals but they're not Yes, um, yes. But yeah, if you have a healthy society with a strong family, um, strong uh, Christianity, um, a strong sense of your racial identity, um, just who we are as, as Europeans, like that's it. we tend towards individualism. Um, but we should be wary of just, um, f just taking that individualism and making that everything. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Well, thank you, David. Oh, yes, we've, uh, we've spoken for 24 minutes, okay. which is not uh, about what we what we plan to do. Yeah. yeah. So thank you for that. And your they can people can find you at XYZ. That's it. Uh, XYZ, XYZ .net .au. Um, yep. Yeah. And people can find me at uponhope.com. Thank you.